the actors and say, You can't handle the truth. What movie? That was in uh, a movie about truth, I think. That's a harsh statement. And I never thought I'd have John Lennon do a sermonic solo for me, so <laughs> I'm up in the world. Let me, let me read the lyrics to you again, if you didn't hear them clearly or understand them. I'm sick and tired of hearing things from uptight, short-sighted, narrow-minded hypocrites. All I want is the truth. Just give me some truth, he wrote. This was, this was like prophetically, because it's 50 years ago, and these lyrics are just as fitted to the culture we live in today as they were then. I've had enough of reading things. We don't even know what to believe anymore, when or if. I've had enough of reading things by neurotic, psychotic, pig-headed politicians. Please send that straight to Washington right now. <laughs> All I want is the truth. Just give me some truth. I don't know. John would have been in his 20s, maybe, when he wrote these words. No short-haired, yellow-bellied son of tricky dickies. That's, that, that was your president in those days, President Nixon. Not a mother Hubbard soft soap me. No short-haired, yellow-bellied son of tricky dickies. Gonna mother Hubbard soft soap me with just a pocket full of hopes. Hopes are important, but when the hopes are not truthful, they're very disappointing. Money for dope, money for rope, he says. I'm sick to death of seeing things from the tight-lipped, condescending mama's little chauvinists. All I want is the truth. Just give me some truth. I've had enough of watching scenes from schizophrenic, egocentric, paranoid prima donnas. We weren't allowed to listen to secular music so much in our fundamentalist background, so I wouldn't have ever paid any attention to those words. And we would consider the Beatles devilish and... Anybody that wasn't singing church music of the devil, you wouldn't, you, you, I'm still fascinated at how I have gained a new freedom and a new understanding about everything. Um, and I'm, the, the judgments and judgmentalism is lifting, you know, more every day. I'm, I'm going to be 70 on my next birthday, and I'm thankful that I'm starting to really see some, some truths, and there's nothing more deceptive than an obvious fact. <clears throat> you separate fact from truth because truth is is moist it moves it's not stagnant or stationary um it's not even standard it can change the truth i say of the piano is that it is a piano the fact is that both mr fortner and mr smith can play it and it can play anything from bach to rock gospel in between country the truth is it is a piano the fact is it can sound different it can feel different. Truth, like time, is, is some cor some, in some bothersome way. It has no fixed meaning. It's like a, it's like a time, <clears throat> which is somewhat of an illusion. Uh, it, maybe it doesn't even exist. Just clocks and calendars and watches do. Time is mystery or missed story, as is truth. Truth is strange. Why? Because perception is the ultimate reality, but not necessarily the ultimate truth. How you perceive things determines how real it is to you or how it manifests to, to and often through you. Perception is the combination of your thoughts and your, your beliefs and opinions and, and your awareness, which is we use the word consciousness for that. The way that you perceive the world is uniquely different from anyone else. I said in the last service, there's a small group looking at me <clears throat> with what I'm wearing, uh, the blue shirt, the, the little jacket I told you in the last service was too tight. Uh, some friends bought it to me, bought it for me for my birthday last month, and they said, "Rich, you're too old, Foggy. We're gonna get you into the now." So they took me out in New York and just bought stuff. I didn't even choose this jacket, but wearing clothes that don't fit is in. <laughs> <laughs> They're even wearing high water britches. That's a part of the. The style. When I was a kid, I had to wear high water bookers and sh sh jackets that were too short. Um, they used to make fun of us in school and say to me with my high water britches, Pearson, your shoes need to have a party and invite your pants down. Because <laughs> I was wearing somebody's cousins, wherever they got that, that, those clothes from. Things are so different. What's cool today wasn't cool yesterday, but that truth 
or that variation or that perception has shifted. The way you perceive the world is uniquely different from anyone else. Your particular view. Sometimes your perception will differ from the opinions of the majority. Mine did, as you know, that's why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> that other majority said, oh no, we ain't taking that. So, and I'm living in a new truth. I'm living my truth, I'm owning my truth. It costs me a lot. It costs me almost everything. And yet, it's like what it cost me bought me a consciousness that is far less judgmental, far less hard to handle with. I'm a happier, lighter person. I still have some of the other truths, but my truth keeps shifting and keeps changing. Uh, your perceptions are formed, uh, embellished, influenced, even decorated from your own personal experiences, values, and knowledge. Church, religion, the world, your outlook on life is heavily influenced by your perceptions, how you perceive, receive, and or create for yourself. Because we're, we're not just realizing truth, we're actually creating truth. I remember the scripture uh, that I grew up around, that you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. It really says make you free. It's not just truth that makes you free. It's the truth you know or identify or recognize, or maybe even relate to that makes, that's a creative term. Set you free is different from making you free. When you're created free, or truth in you creates a freedom, creates an awareness, creates an attitude, creates a new value and or evaluation, a new appreciation or appraisal, because we're always making judgments. And again, these truths can shift, and they can change, and they can, uh, and it feels a little bit, Aldous Huxley said this, <clears throat> there are things known and there are things unknown, and in between are the doors of perception. Truth will set you free, not necessarily physically, but mentally, or in consciousness. When you've been buying a truth from within, the moment you share with everyone, your heart, your mind, your soul, uh, you soar at a different personal attitude. Some truths you hold on to protectively, and they hold on to you protectively. They can invent or pro prevent, invite or invoke, provoke. We are invitational. We, are, we can invite, incite, invent, prevent. Right here. Talk to me, somebody. Well, thank you. <laughs> Again, in a very, in, uh, both, both um, truth and time, I say they're like, they're like illusions. Um, both time and truth are infinite. They have no end, no finish. That's what infinite means, without finish. Somebody who defines you puts a finish on you. Stops you where they are. I don't want to be defined by or confined to any truth. Truth makes its own sound, has its own music, musings. And you create a dance to the music that you hear and the rhythm of yourself or of your soul or your psyche. We're all responding to vibrations and to energy and to thoughts and thoughts are things. And what you think about, you bring about. And however factual or un unfactual that is, if you think about it a certain way, you bring about it a certain way. I'm open to change. I'm, I'm thrilled about the possibilities of things being different. For me, understanding better rather than bitter. This is a crazy world we live in. So when I say both time and truth are, are, are without finish, both are moist, time and truth, mystical, slightly wet, damp, humid, as well as foggy, which means there is reduced visibility. When, when, you, when you're going through a dark period, you can't panic because you don't see everything clearly. At night, it's not as bright. We like to say brighter days are here, but the more, uh, uh, it's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. I love bright, bright, sunshiny days. The responsibility of that is that you see things you may not have wanted to see or you'd rather not see. When the light is all bright, you can see everything. When it's night and you're struggling for the details, don't struggle. You do have a light, it's, but it's called the moon. It's not as bright. It's the night light 
of your, of your life. We all have little night lights by our beds, lamps, nightstands. Don't complain when you can't sleep. Right now, it's a little dark in America. Politically, socially, we've never seen such diversity. Uh, that's non-celebrated. People are afraid of change. I said for years, you've got to make the change, manage the change, and ultimately master change because that's happening. You don't have to like the change, but the universe is clear, clearing and cleansing and correcting itself. This is my personal opinion. I'm not imposing it upon you. I think Donald Trump was exposed, was raised up to expose what ultimately needs to be expelled in some regions and corners of this country. It's funny how in this particular election, if, in this state, if you say Jesus and Trump, you have a chance to win. Now, that just is disgusting to me, as I, but I, don't, I wouldn't dare say that publicly. <laughs> Whoops. This, this red state, there's a certain element of people that want to, they don't want the change, they're fighting it. Make America great to some people means make America hate again, legally. It's in God we trust or in guns we trust. I think some of my friends have gotten mixed up. <laughs> King James and King Jesus ain't the same people. <laughs> Truth is in constant motion, evolving, dissolving, being and becoming. I see the word truth as not only a noun, but a verb, an action word. It's moving. It's expanding. There's no evolution without dissolution. Some things are dissolving while other things are involving or evolving. Involve is your internal engagement. The evolution as things expand, this is, and I say this again complimentary, the human species, I believe is being upgraded. It may not look like it to, to you in the natural. With global warming, that's the judgment. I don't believe that's judgment. I believe that's the universe correcting stuff we screwed up, excuse the terminology. It's fixing and repairing, and in some ways, replacing things from the 20th century that don't fit in the 21st century. Talk to me again, somebody, if you want to. <laughs> Even religion and church as it fit it, I think it's changing so fast. Things like the Boy Scouts, I think it's Boy Scouts, 82,000 suits made them go bankrupt. The Catholic Church, religion as we've known it, is all being scrutinized. And particularly evangelical fundamentalists that think this is a Christian nation should be owned and controlled by Christians. Now, I believe that for many years as well. In some aspects that are about, about 92% of the, the, the population, or 77% of the population is Christian. 92% of the Congress is. There's a little bit of an all balance. I, I follow the Christ principle, but that, that particular dogma can be very destructive a curve in the road is not the end of the road unless you refuse to turn. Make the turn. Make the curve. Be willing to adjust or readjust. Truth dances to its own music. And we must dance with the truth and with our truth. Invent, invite, and you also have the ability to prevent some aspects of truth. Uh, Iris Murdoch said... Um, and I, I love this. We live in a fantasy world, a world of illusion. The great task in life is to find reality. And I add, the great task in life is not only to find reality, but create it. You have that much power in you to create your reality, or to tweak it, or to decorate it, or to accentuate it, to amplify it, or magnify it. Or make it diminish altogether. There's a lot of sleepwalkers around here. Some of y'all in here today sleep. You, you just... <laughs> one time, I don't, when I was traveling overseas one time, I don't know what I took. But I, I got up and ate every night. And I don't remember doing that. I mean, I'd have... In my, in my, I was in Singapore someplace. And I saw all this Fritos and stuff. all over the, I don't even know where it came from. I did it in my sleep. If you can do something like that in your sleep, what on earth would you do when you're awake? There are some people who are walking around unconscious or in denial. Ignorance doesn't just mean to not know. It means to not notice or to refuse to make note of. 
You don't have to like the change. You can resent it, but if you resist it, you will lose the battle because the species is being upgraded. We're moving through a powerful cosmic shift right now, globally. This shift is changing everything we know about our reality. I'm sure you've already noticed some of the, these changes. I mean, it's hard to miss them. But all the chaos you're seeing is part of the shift, and the sooner you learn how to navigate this new landscape, the sooner you can begin to create the life you want. It's a good place to say, right on, preacher. You don't have to say amen if that sounds too religious. Just say, right on, give me a little bit more of it. Watch this. Uh, Another philosopher said, um, all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. Third, it is accepted as being self-evident. A lot of the people that hated me the most when I shifted and expanded my consciousness to this whole universal approach are coming to me now, and uh, they're, they're saying, you know what, Doc, I've, I thought about it. I'm not as upset as I used to didn't like what you were saying. I didn't understand, but I've been reading. I've been thinking. This is the information highway. If you're dumb in this day, it's on purpose. You are intentionally stupid because it's too much, there's too much information. It's not all true, but there's enough information. You can do the research. You don't have to have a college degree to read and study and to ask questions, answer questions, and then question answers. That's how truth evolves. The fact is we're here now seated together in the sanctuary of the church. In a few minutes, that truth will change. That fact will, and we'll be, we might be in the, in the garden area or we'll go home. The fact is you're wearing what you're wearing right now. That's, that can change. As soon as you get home, you got to kick your shoes off, change your wardrobe. You may go eat. You may go visit a loved one. But it's constantly changing, and you're moving with the seasons and the times. I was in Seattle yesterday. It was cold and rainy there for the last three days. I was at a conference there. I come home. I got in real late last night. Part of me is still asleep. And somebody was going to call me from South Africa this morning at a certain time, and I prepared for that call, and it didn't come. And I was really glad it didn't come. And now, but it's got to come another time. You're squeezing energy in, trying to make things work. Uh, The piano is there. Who's playing it? When will they play it? It's not really functioning unless you're hearing it. The lights are not on, but they're still lights or light bulbs, but they're not even functioning. And if you don't turn them on, there are things in your life that need to be switched on or switched off. It doesn't change what they are, but it changes how you relate to them and it relates to you. I have it. When, you're in te- when you are a person of integrity, that means you have integrated all that you are. Your, your fears, your tears, your laughter, your sadness, your covetousness, or greed, your liberality, sometimes you're angry, sometimes you're not. I, all of that lives in me. I don't believe in personality disorders as much as I believe in personalities out of order. There's a part of me that's bold and arrogant, courageous, stupid. I I got some of everything in there. And I use them rather than letting them use me. I know how to use stupidity. I know how to act stupid and make you think I don't know what you're talking about and then get you later on down the road. (laughs) President James Garfield said, the truth will set you free, but first... It'll make you miserable. Somebody else said, first it'll piss you off. Sometimes we don't want to know all the truths. Or we're afraid of some of them. That doesn't mean they're not truths. If I told you today, and they'll, 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 they'll put something, I guess my time's close up. They'll, they'll, they'll put something in the news, like they're, they're saying we're going into inflation. And, um, and yet I see people spending more money today, common folks, they're going to just spend the money, left and right. But they tell us, see, again, words, we don't just spell words, words spell us and cast spells on us. And an spell is a, an enchantment, is a charm, a lucky charm sometimes. We could charm you. Pulpit tears do that a lot. To enchant means to chant. You repeat something over and over and over again to yourself, to your soul, to your psyche. Then that becomes reality because words are things. And what you think about, you bring about. So you have the power to create your reality as much as you're willing to do that. You can cry or sigh or whine. 
but I'm looking at everything different, different now, and I'm very happy to, to enjoy this new breath of fresh air. It looks, it's going to get bad before it gets better. It's going to get worse before it gets better. There's a lot of uh, what happened in Buffalo with, with the young man, 18 years old. He just wanted to kill black people and Jews. Well, we hear of that. A lot of that was, was released in this country with one of our presidents. I'm not going to name him. <laughs> but this arrogance, this bullying spirit, I'm not against everything that Mr. Trump did. Rat poison is 90% good corn. It's a 10% strychnine that makes it lethal. How can people who consider themselves sober be so bitter? Especially my fundamentalist friends, and I love them. I got family members, but I have to, I've had to change a lot of my thinking and adjust to a new way of being, and, and it feels good to walk with less shame and less guilt. We do get a little angry. Sometimes you need to look somebody right in the face that you love and tell them the truth. Psychologists say somebody can touch you like this very softly on your arm for all night. Just like that. Not, not hard. Just like that. Tomorrow you'll have a bruise and sometimes you might even be able to move that arm. Because every time they touch you, a blood vessel breaks. A, a, a microscopic blood vessel may break. Some of you are sitting in the relationships you'd have been in. Nobody's ever hit you hard, but you wake up one morning and you can't love. Or even like. It's like the end of what happened. Years and years of hearing the same thing, doing the same thing, thinking the same, and learning how to adjust to what is agonizing to your soul and not addressing it. Sometimes you don't adjust, you address. Excuse me? Sometimes you don't address, you just adjust. You have to know when. To be quiet, to be confrontive without being combative. That's the culture we live in because there's so much diversity, so much plurality. But I like the change. I like the diversity. I like the different flavors of what life is bringing. And I'm learning how to honor truth, separate it from fact when I need to, and realize that both can change. Both has changed. Both will change. And so will I. Consider yourself today, compare yourself if you will, right now, what is this, uh, May something, May 15th, uh, 2022. How are you May 15th or around this area, 2021? Notice you're not wearing masks. That doesn't mean COVID isn't still present and increasing in some states. But I don't like smelling my breath all the time. America's had to smell her breath. <laughs> That's, and it, we realize it doesn't smell that good. Now you're wondering why people are offering you all that gum and all those mints. <laughs> There's a problem with truth decay in this country. Orthodontists and orthodoxy, they're running, well, one straightens out tooth, the other one straightens out truth. So we're having to reawaken again to truths that have been twisted. Truths that have been shammed and shamed. I don't know if it's a right or wrong thing, truth. It's just a real thing. And I'm adjusting to it. Wrap your arms around yourself like this and say, I'm, this is me. Say it. This is me. How much of you are you okay with? Is there any particular truth about you that you're trying to change? Or let me say, is there any particular fact about you? I asked the folks at the last service, I'm going to encourage you to do it too. When you go home today, uh, you might want to do it in your car, but just move, move something in your life, in your home. Bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, living room, family room. Move something and make space for your next iteration. For whatever your nextness is, whatever is to evolve in you, just do it symbolically. Some of you need to just do it in the glove compartment of your car if you've taken a tetanus shot, because I know those glove compartments can be disastrous to meet somebody <laughs> or the basement or the attic. But I, I would move something, just say, you know, I just, I just made space for the next part of me that I want to experience and express. It'll be fun. You might want to change the color of your hair or change the wardrobe or do something to just say, I'm open to change. I want to be curious and exploratory. I want to exp 
experience at levels that I never have before, and I'm not too old to change. All living things grow, all growing things change, and all change is a challenge. Anybody up for the challenge? Remember, you must just say, straighten your face up, because that face can change. Turn to the person next to you and say, straighten that face. No, don't say it. We went up and say, take that face off, you know. Face it, face it head on. Let's do this. There's no more time. And I said the last time I spoke, there's no more time when this particular spiritual community, this particular philosophy, which I embrace and embraces me, uh, is more pertinent and relevant to the hour. If we're ever going to be really all souls, it's time to really kick it up a notch. Because this message is powerful and it, it reaches millions of people and they're waiting to hear the voice of this house and the, the, the mind of this, this particular ministry. So let's make it better rather than bitter in the coming years. I love you. Peace and blessing to all of you.